morning, people! Mike Martin's here with the Mike Martin channel. Thanks for joining, liking, and subscribing, and being part of the channel. All right, so what is going on? There is a lot happening, and there is a lot that we need to discuss on how to fix our countries. Today, I want to focus on Canada. I live in Canada. I'm a small business owner here in Canada in a small town. I left the big city. You can watch this YouTube channel going back to 10 years where we're talking about money laundering, inflation, cost of living, price of food, predictions we made seven, eight years ago where food was headed, electricity was headed. So it's all on this channel. And if it's taken down and this channel is taken down off of the YouTube platform, you can search across Odyssey. All our videos are up there. Okay, so let's take a look at how do we fix Canada? How do we make Canada competitive again? How do we make Canada desirable again? How do we make Canada the, like it was back in 1982, 83, 84, 85, when basically all you needed was a part-time job bagging gross, not a part-time, a full-time job bagging groceries, and you could pay off your house in five, six years, literally. My dad paid off his home, uh, came from Portugal, bought us a home, worked his butt off, and uh, my mom started to work when I got a bit bigger and helped with the income. We paid off our house in five, six years. And there's a lot of those uh, stories where families come in from Europe with two nickels in their pocket and working their way and building the current infrastructure that we have today. It just didn't come from heaven, this infrastructure. This infrastructure was built by somebody. And it was primarily the Europeans that came over and built a lot of the roads. And I can attest to that. All my family were laborers and working in the labor field. So what's going on? How do we make Canada great again? What do we need to do? So I took down six ways to fix Canada. And it's kind of important that if there's anybody of importance, maybe uh, bigger channels could see some of these points, right? Uh, I've got a lot of my speaking points taken. No, no credit to me, of course, but that's okay. And these speaking points were basically brought up on other bigger platforms. And, and I'm basically the quarterback here, getting the, uh, planting the seeds. Six ways to fix Canada. Number six, money laundering. This is the re the reason why we're in this whole situation we've been all these years is because of money laundering. Money laundering is so, especially when it's not layered. So what am I talking about? Money laundering, the Vancouver model. In 2010, Vancouver basically opened its doors after the 2010 Vancouver Olympics to the world and saying, bring your money here, come to Canada. It's the place to be. It's the safest place to be, all that stuff. And tons of money was leaving mainland China that China had to put capital flow uh, restrictions on their currency because everybody was dumping their money in Vancouver at the time. So 2010, and that's why they created the Vancouver model. Look it up. So money laundering, uh, it, it, it actually disenfranchised our real estate markets and took out the middle class. So instead of four to six times to year your, your yearly income to buy a house, it actually became 18 to 24 times your yearly income, net, not gross. Everybody looks at gross and says, oh, I make 200,000 a year. No, you make 93,000 after you pay the taxes to the government. So net income, people were just, could not even afford to put a down payment on a one bedroom. So the real estate fiasco has been going on here in Canada and Australia and other countries, New Zealand and the UK and the blue states of America have been competing for foreign investors, uh, foreign investors to come in and basically buy out their housing market. And that resulted in a ton of shadow banking, artificially low interest rates to get the locals into the markets because the locals couldn't afford to get into the markets. And guess what? They had to lower rates uh, even dangerously because they needed that fresh blood in the market. Because if you don't get first time home buyers, you don't have an economy. So they closed the, the money laundering investigation in Canada three times. Because they realize that, ooh, we're going to imprison a ton of people or we're going to confiscate billions of dollars of money that was brought in here illegally. Ah, let the Canadian people suffer. Let their, let their, let their savings be diminished. Bring in more fentanyl. That's coming down on the list. Anyway, so money laundering. Fixed the money laundering problem we have in Canada because it's disenfranchising and destroying the Canadian or what's left of the Canadian middle class. Number number five, mainstream media. Back to the private sector. The mainstream media is 
is bought and paid for by the Canadian government. And unfortunately, um, a lot of the articles that were put up, I used to reference articles about the mass deportation of Portuguese families in Toronto. Um, the Sunday Sun, the Toronto Sun, the, the Hamilton Post, all the CBC, CTV were covering the mass deportations of Portuguese families for about two, two years, like an ongoing story, going to the high schools, grabbing all the kids that spoke Portuguese, uh, shutting down Dufferin Mall. All those articles were up there. Now the articles are all gone. Ever since the Trudeau government bailed out the CTV and the CBC and all those big mainstream media giants – uh, because they can't do it on their own, our media became public sector. It no longer became private. So the private individual cannot report his story anymore. So that's a big problem. They've basically digital book burning. We talked about that for the last 10 years on the channel. They're going to digitally book burn everything, or they're just going to get rid of anything or any everything that goes against their status quo and what they're trying to push on their agendas. So the mainstream media needs to go back to the private sector, Okay. Let's move on. Uh, if Canada wants to melt away inflation overnight, listen to this. We have so number so that was six five. This is number four. If Canada wants to fix its inflationatory problem overnight, get rid of the protectionism, bring in the competition. Overnight, you'll see Canada its its inflation problem basically uh, go back to normal numbers. Bring in more airlines for competition. Then this way, we'll have more competition. And the prices and the pricing is obviously more flexible. Bring in more telecom companies, more internet companies, more car insurance companies, more everything companies. Because the protectionism in Canada is bring in actual solar, allow people in Canada to buy their own solar equipment that is CSA approved so we can do it ourselves instead of having to pay a government affiliated solar company that's going to rip us off. One after another after another. The protectionism in Canada is out of whack. So protectionism. Get rid of it and you'll get rid of your inflation. Number three. Uh, yeah, cut the public sector in half. Get rid of half of the public sector workers. If you want to fix this country and its inflationatory problems and its uh, crazy spending. Cut the public sector sector in half. Remember in 2019 before the you know what? The Trudeau government announced they created 210,000 jobs. Guess what? They created 210,000 public sector jobs paid by taxpayers. So that's the problem here. They've been attacking small businesses. I can't even ship anything anymore from my store. That's where it's gotten to. I can't ship squat anymore because the shipping has gotten so expensive. It cost me $70 to ship a board game to Vancouver and it's two and a half hours from here. So they need to cut the public sector in half. And what am I talking about? So people are saying, oh, Mike, uh, what about all the doctors and all, the, uh, all the, um, the, the, the firefighters? We're already losing them already. No, I'm not talking about them, people. I'm actually talking about HR. Canada's HR is the HR sector in the federal, provincial Private sector, uh, no, 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 all the different municipal levels, the HR. There's more HR workers in HR that barely speak English and they just push pencils around. Uh, I don't know if they write anything, but they're just wasting our tax dollars. Some of them making two, three hundred thousand a year so they can afford to live in Canada working for the public sector, for the government, through our tax dollars. So you see what's happening here? Public sector, HR, cut it, cut, just cut the Canadian public sector in half. Get rid of the, just the useless people walking around wasting our tax dollars. Okay, that's another one. Cut the public sector in half. Number two, uh, discontinue ties with communist China. Remember that article I keep bringing up? Uh, Chinese owned mine, big, no, biggest coal mine in BC, Chinese owned, no Canadian hires. That garbage needs to stop. No communist ties in Canada. Canada's for the people, by the people, right? And cutting off, you know, the fentanyl that was coming in from China. Canada knew, and the CBC and the CTV was reporting, Chinese gangs, not Chinese gangs, the, Chi the Chinese government owned factories was producing fentanyl chemicals to make fentanyl and bringing it into Vancouver and California. 
Oh, but the Chinese aren't doing that anymore because they're bringing it to Mexico and they're fabricating the fentanyl and all the drugs in Mexico and bringing it up the coast. So c cutting communist ties, cutting everything with China, just leaving China alone, it's so far away, we should be able to produce, fabricate our own stuff in our own country and bring the jobs back. Oh, Mike, I don't want to pay that much for an air conditioner. Yeah, but it's Canadian made. All the, all the parts and all the materials are from Canada. Right. Once we start building things on a grander scale, bigger scale, it's not hard to pay off employees. Once we corner the air conditioning market, once we corner the boiler market, once we corner everything, we have the materials. We could do it. We have the, you know, the, the materials to make this stuff. We have the fabrication. Uh, we have people that could fabricate this stuff. Once we start cornering all those markets, Canada will be known as the air conditioning capital of the world. Don't mess with Canada. You know what I'm saying? Keeping people and Canadians employed is what's important. So discontinue China with communist China. And number one, and basically dissolve the monarchy in Canada and free up the crown land. Crown land is like inflation. It's basically taking up land that's owned by the queen or the past queen so dissolve the monarchy in canada free up crown land if you want to free canada and if canada those are a couple those are just six things that i put up right there and it's reinvestigate stop the money laundering stop competing from out, outside money mainstream media needs to go back to the private sector protectionism uh, uh, uh bring in competition allow canadians to make their own choice and cut the public sector in half uh, discontinue ties with communist China and uh, dissolve the monarchy in Canada and become a republic. And that's it. If Canada could become a republic and if Canada could bring back... Look at the shipping problems. I don't know why there's no people in government right now. Look at the shipping and the shipping issues we're having. And the, and the, and the, this would be a great platform. Just They'll come up and say, hi, look at all the shipping problems we're having. We should start fabricating again in Canada so we're not so dependent on shipping from overseas. Hopefully a big channel takes that and runs with it and becomes king. Anyways, guys, I wanted to put this out there because there's – we've been played. We've been being, being played here for so many years. I can't even ship any of my products out anymore. So I'm dependent on walk-in traffic now because shipping anything for me is, is more money than the product I'm selling. But that's only in Canada because I checked shipping prices on, in, in 25, 30 different countries the other day. And I was doing comparisons and the shipping is peanuts in comparison to what we pay for here in Canada. England is kind of expensive. Australia is very expensive. So I'm looking around at different like shipping and prices. It, it ain't cheap in other countries, Commonwealth countries, English speaking countries. They're destroying us. They're destroying the private sector and they're destroying everything. If Canada wants to get back on its feet... It needs to at least complete three of these if it wants to go anywhere. If your politicians are on, on stage and they're not addressing a single one of these issues, then Canada's going nowhere fast. And that's why Canadians are escaping Canada. Born and raised Canadians, educated Canadians are escaping Canada faster than you could imagine. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.